Hello, hello again friends and loyal Wolfpack members, Chaos of you and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today we're going to be having a look at my Vulture. It's been a while since I did a My Ship video on this, and I have actually gone and put some serious work into most of my ships. So they have changed in some way. Least notably in my Corvette, but all the other ships have changed a good, good amount since we've last had a look at them. So, first of all, we're going to have a look at this, my Vulture. First of all, you'll notice that I've actually gone and swapped out the Plasma Accelerator for a Multi-Cannon. And that's because I actually don't have the power to run a Plasma Accelerator anymore. This thing is run really to the wire as it is, and we're producing over 20 megawatts of power. Now, this is because I have gone and massively overcharged the power plant, but we're going to have a look at that just now. So core internals, you can see that I've swapped out for the lightweight alloys for the reactive surface composites. And these are modified for thermal resistance. Now, there's a reason for this. And the reason being is that, as you can see down here, all of my resistances are in the positive. Now, every single armor in the game, every single bulkhead in the game, has at least one negative side effect to it so it's going to be like uh, negative thermal resistance negative kinetic resistance or negative explosive resistance or something there are no armors in the game that have all positives unless you go for a reactive surface composite and modify it for thermal resistance it's not always going to work out like this i did actually get a fairly good roll on this but as we can see we've got 250 percent hull boost we've got kinetic resistances thermal resistances and explosive resistances so these are some really good alloys and what these are doing is basically making it so that if our shields go down we're going to survive as long as we can it's a vulture honestly we're not going to survive that long with shields down but we will survive a good long while power plant as we can see it's modified for grade 5 overcharge so we have a 32 percent increase in power production Thrusters, as always, I've started going for grade 5 dirty drive tuning. We've got, we haven't got the best roll, but we're not far off it. It's 29.2. I have had ships where I've gone over 30, and I'd love to have had this on this ship, but yes. Next is the frame shift drive. This is modified for long range, long range jump, obviously. Still not the best. It's a little bit under maximum, but that's fine. We don't really mind. It's a short range combat ship. The life support is modified for lightweight, and it's, it may look like it's only grade 4, but grade 4 is actually the maximum for this. We've managed to get this down to 70.5, which is ever so slightly over the maximum. The power distributor is modified for charge enhanced power distributor. It's only grade 4. I could go up to grade 5, but with the rest of the weapons modified the way they are, I really don't need this overly. The sensors are modified for long range, grade 4 so that we're going to be able to see the ships from about 60% further away. So that's awesome. In the grade five military slot, we have a shield cell bank, and this really helped to buff this ship back in the day, because before that, we only could have a grade four. Now this really helps with this ship's sustainability. Taking a look at the hard points quickly, we can see we've got a multi-cannon, and this one is modified for efficient weapon and it is also got corrosive shelves now the reason this is modified for efficient weapons is because i needed to have a reduction to the power draw on the power plant and uh, yeah because this 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 ship is really really running at m as close as it can to its power the next one is a beam laser here we go and this one again is efficient grade 5 and this is regeneration sequence so I can go and heal other ships in my wing if need be. Now between these two weapons firing them both continually my power distributor does not go down at all as well as the fact that I really don't gain any heat at all so this is amazing. Having a look at the utility mounts I've basically got a chaff launcher, a heat sink launcher, a shield booster and a standard kill warrant scanner. Now I haven't bothered modifying this yet. I may do in the future, but I'm not too worried about it right now. The chaff launcher is modified for lightweight, I believe. Let's go and see. Modification, yes, mass reduction. 
Okay, good. The heat sink launcher, I don't remember what I modified this for. This is extra ammo. Okay, good. So we've got one heat sink per shield cell, so that's perfect. And the shield booster is modified for my standard. I really like these resistance augmented shield boosters. So I've got more resistances. It's more power, but the integrity's also gone down. But overall, it's no extra weight, which I really like. Now, last but by certainly no means least, let's go and have a look at the optional internals. Having a look in the optionals, we can see that I have actually gone and upgraded the shields on this. And this is one of the reasons why we're running so close to our power limits, is we've got prismatic shields. Now, these ones are in fact modified for thermal resistance, the same way I modified my standard shields and or the biweave shields that we had last time. I really don't remember what I had on this ship before. I think it was biweaves. What this means is our integrity goes up, our broken regen is faster, so it doesn't take quite as long for us to regenerate our shields from broken. So that's not bad. We've lost a little bit of kinetic resistance, but we gained some of that, if not all of that, back from our shield booster. Thermal resistance is up close to 60%, and the explosive resistance is up ever so slightly as well. So that's not bad. In all in all, this ship gets some absolutely insane shield strength. Now, I know a lot of people really do prefer to go for pure mega jewelage over resistances, but I really like resistances because that means I get more protection for my ship per mega jewel, which basically means that my shield cell banks actually go and do a lot more work because every mega jewel that they go and regenerate means that I'm going to be getting more protection from them. But if I was just going for pure mega jewelage, I'd be, re I'd be uh, regenerating less mega jewelage percentage wise overall with the shield cell bank. So I'd be getting overall proportionally less protection back. I'd be getting proportionally less worth out of a shield cell bank. Next, we do have a class 4 fuel scoop because sometimes I do feel the need to go and uh, hit the solar winds with this one. We could swap this out for whatever we wanted. It's not a massive issue. We could we could potentially put an autofill maintenance unit in here or even some extra armor. But this thing's been made heavier enough with the the hull armor. So I'm not worrying too much about that. We've also got a 2A frame shift drive interdictor, which is more than enough to go and pull things out of Super Cruise. We've also got a hull reinforcement package, which I have gone and modified for heavy duty. So that's going to be a whole reinforcement of additional 61% or 61.6% and a bunch more resistances. So that's going to go and get added on top of our normal resistances for the hull. So this thing is fairly tanky. And we've also got a 1D module reinforcement package. And this is mainly for if our shields do go down, we can boost the hell out of there. And hopefully our thrusters are not going to be getting taken out by missile attacks or whatever. So this is just to protect our thrusters and potentially life support and so on so yeah that's what this is for but first of all let's go and take it outside and see how well it actually goes and performs so just outside of the port we can go and see just how quickly this thing actually goes and accelerates with all this armor all these shields and the grade 5 dirty drives so standard acceleration As you can see, it accelerates very, very quickly, and our standard cruising speed is over 300 meters per second. It's very close to 310. So, slowing down. This thing does slow down very, very well, as you can see. It slows down just as fast as it accelerates. We're now boosting. You can see that we boost over 450 standard, and then as we're actually traveling, you can see that we boost to about 493, 494 meters per second. Yep, yeah, look like 494, potentially 495 for a split second. Now, sitting in the sweet spot, we can go and see just how well this thing pitches without using our maneuvering thrusters. You can see that this thing does go and pitch really, really quickly. Doing a boost turn with but with the uh, maneuvering thrusters we can see that we come around quite quickly and lots of lots of donuts in space but anyway that's enough for the random show of its maneuverability let's go and see how well it actually goes and performs in combat it looks like we've got our first target a wanted asp explorer 
It's only expert rank, so we'll go and see how well this goes. We should be able to take this guy out without much bother. So we can easily go and keep, stay around this guy. We can dance around this guy all day. And as you can see, full pips into weapons, my, I don't have any prob problem even firing out all my weapons at once, or both my weapons at once. My shields are holding up really spectacularly, and he's already gone. We do also have a clipper. Whoa, hello. As you can see, flight assisting off and on works really well with this ship because we've got so much power and so much grunt coming out of these engines. So again, let's go and maneuver around this guy. Even flight assist on and offing with only one pip into engines is really great. Well, he's firing missiles at us, but again, I'm not overly worried. Because we can just side strafe, as we are currently doing, keep in his blind spot so he literally cannot hit me. Hello, well, I think we took a hit there. It's only because we're getting a bit too close, I suspect. But let's just pitch down. Now, sometimes it may take a while to get through some shields, but as soon as we're through, he is going to be in a world of pain. Boost around to get him a little bit off, off footing. And even without flight assist, I can actually stay pointing at this guy quite easily, even when boosting. And he's very close to being gone. So just look at that. That is awesome. There we go. He's completely gone. And we can just be off on our merry way looking for other things to go and shoot at. I love this. And just even if we weren't dancing around other targets, these shields are ridiculously strong. Well, it looks like we've got an eagle that's eager for a beating. Now, I'm I always love popping eagles. So let's actually go and see how quickly this thing will just pop. I've got to say, though, his shields are holding up longer than I'm expecting. And there we go. He's gone. And right now, we've got somebody else wanting to shoot at us. And it's a Sidewinder. What a surprise. I really feel bad for these small little ships that are... Like, they're really out of their depth here, aren't they? Now, this may be a proper challenge here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to go and avoid the shots from these guys. I'm actually going to go and try and tank as many as I can. And do this in my standard, usual way of only having one pip into systems. Because this is how I like doing things. I only usually put pips into systems if I'm starting to take a lot of shield damage. Because I always think a good offense is better than a good defense. But oh well, let's go and take this guy down. Like I said, I'm not going to do. I'm going to do my level best not to go and avoid them all that much. And we are being fired on by the fur lance behind us. So we'll take this guy out, so we'll know exactly how much damage we're taking. So, like I said, all we're doing is we are just making sure that we are manoeuvring enough to keep our weapons trained on the enemy. There we go. Now we are taking shots from this guy from what look like, looks like a huge pulse laser. And we're at one ring of shields. You know what? Let's pop off a shield cell bank. There we go. One shield cell bank does a little under two rings. So that's really good for these shields, because these shields are strong. There we go. I'm gonna sit and just do some face tanking if I need if I can. If he doesn't keep running away. We'll target his power plant. Now I'm pretty sure I can out uh, out survive you here. There we go. As you can see, from a third lance with a huge 
pulse laser. I, I was hoping for plasmas, actually. But, uh, oh well. Because plasmas would do more damage against this than you'd imagine. Because plasmas do go and ignore 60% uh, even of your resistances to your shield. And your armor as well, I suspect. So, resist... Uh, now, I was kind of hoping that this guy was going to be armed with plasma accelerators. And there we go. You can see, whilst even without trying to avoid incoming attacks, my shields held up really, really well, even with only one pip into systems. So, this has been a look at my Vulture build as of 2.3. So, what do you guys think of this ship, how I've got it set out? What would you do to improve it? What do you like about my build? What do you dislike about it? Honestly, I love this ship the way it's set up right now, and I don't plan to change anything. At least for the time being. 2.4 may be a different story, because I'm expecting we're going to be getting all the new Thargoid weapons. So that is going to be very, very interesting. So yes, let me know in the comments what you think of my setup, and what you would do to make it better, and how, how terrible I am at combat. So yes, let me know in the comments what you think. Like the video if you've liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Thank you very much for watching. You can come and join our communities on Facebook or Inara. Links will be in the video description. As of this video, we are now ranked third in the largest wings on Inara. So come and help us on our way to number one. I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. Until next time, my fellow commanders, keep flying and stay shiny.